Okay, so our goal was to uh, prove the snake lemma, which says that this sequence uh, in orange here is, is exact. Okay, so we had this uh, delta followed by I star, P star, delta. Uh, in the last video, uh, we, uh, we gave a, uh, we validated the definition of this delta. So we've got a well-defined homomorphism delta, uh, and we need to show uh, that this sequence uh, here is, uh, is exact. And remember, delta was defined in terms of snakes. So to find delta of hn plus 1w, we had to choose a snake. In other words, we had to choose uh, w bar, wv, u, u bar, satisfying these conditions we've written down here. And then delta of w bar is going to be equal to u bar. <coughs> and uh, so we need to prove this exactness. And uh, all the uh, that's all going to involve a bunch of elements, uh, which we can, uh, we can mark on this diagram here, where we've got the uvs and ws in degree n plus 1, n and n minus 1. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, in the middle of this sequence here, uh, with uh, at HNV, uh, and so we want to claim that the uh, image of I lower star is the same as the kernel of P lower star. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> so one half of that is easy. Uh, in that, uh, if we do P star composed with I lower star, if we do the composite across across the middle of this, uh, this line here, okay, well, that's the same thing as P composed with I star, okay, um, but, uh, but you know, this, uh, sequ these sequences here, this is all short, these a short exact sequence in every row, so P composed with I is just zero, uh, um, so this composite is zero, and that means that the image of I lower star is contained in the kernel of P lower star. <clears throat> um, so that's contained one way around, uh, but the real work is to do it the other way around. Uh, uh, <clears throat> um, so suppose we've got some element, um, just call it square bracket V. Uh, okay, let's say it this way. So we've got, suppose we've got some cycle. Okay, so some cycle and then the corresponding homology class uh, gets sent to zero. Um, in other words, it lies in the kernel. Uh, so uh, we need to show that it also lies in the image of I lower star. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, but uh, P lower star of the square bracket V is the same thing as square bracket P, P of V. So this has got to be zero. Uh, and if a square bracket of something to be zero, that means you know, the coset PV plus boundaries is zero, so PV must be a boundary. Uh, so that just means that PV uh, has got to be a D of <coughs> W prime. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just mark some of these things we're considering here. Um, yeah, so we started with a V here. And then we had PV here, uh, yeah, and PV here there is going to be the image uh, of some W prime there. <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, <coughs> okay. So now, uh, um, now we're going to choose uh, some V prime in V n plus one with PV prime equal W prime. Okay, in other words, we're going to choose a V prime up here, which maps over to that W prime. Okay, <coughs> um, okay and we can do that because P is surjective, remember. <coughs> okay, so now you might think, well, DV prime, perhaps that's the same as, as, uh, as V. Uh, it's not actually necessarily the same as V, but uh, let's uh, subtract them and see what we get. Um, so let's look at, uh, we took at the, the difference. Uh, v minus dv prime. Okay, um, so it's not going to be zero in general, but p of it's going to be zero, I claim, as we'll just see. So that's uh, p of v minus uh, here, well, most obviously p of d of v prime, but p and d commute. It's a chain map, so I can write that instead as d of p of v prime. Uh, that's p v minus d w prime. Because okay, PV P of V prime was, D, was W prime, but then also uh, P, uh, DW prime was PV, as we wrote here. Um, 
Okay. <coughs> um, so what we're seeing here is that P V minus TV prime, that's in the kernel of P, because P of it is zero. But the kernel of P is the same as the image of I, because we're assuming that the, uh, the rows are exact. Um, <coughs> Um, so we see that v minus tv prime uh, is i of u prime. Uh, I think that was called it i of u. Uh, uh, so here, I'm just marking this as this is going to be over here. u is going to be over here in un. Okay. I'll draw all kind of dotted lines to say that this. Uh, and now, now we're seeing that uh, v is dv prime plus i u. So in other words, it's the sum of the, you know, you take the sum of the two dotted lines. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> uh, so v minus dv prime is i u for, um, uh, for some u. Uh, <coughs> okay, now I want to claim, you know, we, we're supposed to be showing, we, need, we want to show that our square bracket v is in the image of this i lower star. So we need to produce a homology class over here, uh, which is going to be mapped by i lower star. Um, uh, so we'd like to take square bracket u, but for square bracket u to be meaningful, we need to know that u is a cycle. Uh, so, so we want to show that du is zero, and because i is injective, it'll be enough to show that i of du is zero. Uh, so let's uh, look at uh, <coughs> uh, i of du. Okay, um, so that's the same thing as d of i of u. Uh, but we know what IU is, so uh, that's equal to V minus DV prime, so that's DV minus uh, D squared uh, V prime. Okay. <coughs> um, but remember, V was a cycle. You know, we started with V being a cycle here, and we could, uh, could indicate that like this if we wanted. Okay. Uh, v was a cycle, that was our initial assumption, so V goes to zero there. Um, and then D squared also is zero, of course. Uh, so this is. Uh, <clears throat> so we now see that uh, u is an n cycle in u. <clears throat> uh, uh, now i lower star of square bracket u. Okay, so that's uh, you know, square bracket u is now meaningful because we know that uh, u is a cycle. So square bracket, that's square bracket i u. Okay. Uh, but i u is uh, v minus dv prime. Okay, but remember we're doing homology here, so with these square brackets means cosets relative to the group of boundaries, and dv prime that's a boundary. It's in the image of d, so it doesn't change the cocycle. So that's the same thing as square bracket v. Uh, so we're seeing that uh, v square bracket v is in the image of i lower star. So we've seen that the kernel of p lower star is contained in the image of i lower star, uh, which is what we were supposed to be proving. Okay, so, uh, so next step, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, what happens here? Right. So we've got p lower star followed by delta. Uh, so next lemma. Um, so we're going to say that if we do uh, HNV to HNW by P lower star, and then by delta uh, to HN minus 1U, I'm going to claim that this composite is zero, uh, i.e. the image of P lower star is contained in the kernel of delta. Uh, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so um, let's actually kind of spell that out in terms of uh, uh, in terms of how delta was defined. So I want to say that if I do p lower star to something, uh, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, so this is saying that if I've got any element v lower bar, v bar uh, in H N V, uh, there was a snake. Uh, starting with p lower star v bar and ending zero. Okay, 
Now, why is that? Why is that the same, right? I mean, it says so. We're saying the, what we're saying here is you start with, take any element H and V, you apply P star, and then you apply delta. You should get zero. So how do you apply delta? Well, you take your P star V bar, and then you choose a snake which starts with P star V bar and see what it ends with. So we need to show if there is a snake like that starting ending with zero. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, um, uh, so we choose any V in ZNV. Uh, so V bar is a homology class, so it can be represented by a cycle V. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, um, and so remember, p star p lower star of v bar. That just means uh, square bracket p of v. Um, um, so now we can find a snake, right? So we've got uh, we start with p lower star v, and then uh, p of v uh, is a cycle representing it, uh, and then. Uh, and that's a snake. Okay, so uh, do you need to check that it's a snake? Why is it a snake? Well, uh, we should check the conditions which are written here. So p lower star v, uh, p lower star v bar. Okay, uh, so that's uh, that's an element in the homology of W. And then p of v is a cycle which represents it, so that uh, condition two holds. And then v is an element of v n with p of v being equal to p of v. So that's obviously true. Uh, and then uh, yeah, and more to the point is this condition four, right? So, um, so what about d of v, right? So v was a cycle here. In this context, v is a cycle, so d of v is zero. Uh, so I can take my u to be zero, and then i of u is zero, which is the same as d of v. So this condition four is satisfied. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, you, yeah, the, the homology class represented by zero is zero, so condition five is obvious. So that's a snake. It starts with p star v bar. And, and this proves that delta of p star v bar is zero. In other words, uh, that composite is zero. Uh, so that proves our, our next level. Okay, so the next, uh, next thing I'm going to look at, so yeah, we just proved uh, that, uh, this, that <coughs> this composite is zero uh, down here. Now I'm going to prove that the next composite is zero. So, uh, uh, okay, so we'll, let's just add this on here. Uh, go down to uh, by i lower star to h n minus one v. Um, okay, so I'm going to claim that this composite here is uh, is zero, uh, which is kind of the same as this composite here being zero, just with n shifted by one, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, <coughs> so uh, so we do the claim is like this, and uh, if we do h uh, n w. Uh, going uh, to h n minus one u by delta, uh, and then by i lower star uh, to <coughs> um, uh, h n minus one v, claiming that this composite is zero, i.e. the image of this delta is contained in the kernel of i lower star. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Um, um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, um, so I suppose we've got some W bar in H N W. Uh, so then we choose a snake W bar W V U U bar. So delta W bar is U bar. Um, uh, so we need to show that i lower star of u bar is zero. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what we're proving, claiming to prove here. Uh, we want to prove that I, composite i lower star composed of delta is zero, so we need to just check that i lower star delta w bar is zero, in other words, i lower star of u bar is zero. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, u bar is square bracket u, right? That was this condition here in the definition of a snake. Uh, so i lower star u bar is square bracket i of u. Um, 
But uh, we've got the snake condition here, condition four, I of u is d of v. Okay, so we've got uh, square bracket d of v, but square bracket d of anything is always zero, because uh, square bracket means cosets with respect to the image of d. Um, so that's uh, that's just zero. Okay. So that proves that this composite is zero, and so the image of del delta is contained in the kernel y lower star. So let's just quick take stock where we've got. Um, we've proved the image of i lower star is e equal to the kernel of p lower star. Uh, <coughs> uh, we should prove that the image of, uh, image of p lower star is contained in the kernel of delta, and also that the image of delta is contained in the kernel of i lower star. We've got two other containments to do. Okay, so uh, the next lemma, we're going to prove the reverse of the previous in, uh, inclusion. Uh, so we're going to play, uh, prove the following. Uh, that uh, <coughs> the uh, kernel of this map i lower star uh, from uh, hn minus 1u uh, to uh, hn minus 1v uh, is contained in the image of uh, a boundary map to, uh, delta going here. Okay, uh, <coughs> so. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> Um, so let's suppose we've got uh, some u bar in hn minus 1 u with uh, i lower star u, uh, u bar is zero. Um, <clears throat> okay, we need to, uh, uh, need to show that u lower star is in the image delta, I uh, need to construct a snake. I uh, need to construct a snake that ends with u bar, okay? Because then uh, if we've got, we've got a snake like that, that means that delta of w bar is u bar, and so u bar is in the image of delta, which is uh, claim. Okay, <coughs> um, uh, so we're going to choose some uh, cycle. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so uh, u is a u bar is a cohomology as a homology class. So certainly we can choose a cycle that represents. It. Okay, so we have to kind of work backwards through these steps here to construct our snake. Okay, <coughs> um, uh, now uh, um, okay, so we're assuming that i lower star u bar is zero. I lower star u bar that's square bracket i of u. Okay, so we're saying that uh, i of u is a uh, <coughs> um, yeah, square bracket i u is zero, and that means that i u is a is a boundary, and this uh, this is the coset relative to boundary, so i u is a boundary. So this is saying that i u is d v uh, for some v, uh, which is now going to be in v a. Okay, <coughs> um, um, and now I'm going to put w. Is PV. Uh, okay, so that's uh, um, so this is in uh, WN. Okay, let me show you my let's, uh, let's actually mark some of this up here. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so we started uh, we started with our U here, and uh, <coughs> when we said that I U is uh, zero, uh, and uh, therefore that there's a V here. Oh uh, well, because you know, I, we said that I, square bracket i of u is zero, so there exists a v here, which maps down i of u. And now we're going to define uh, w uh, to be the image over here. Like that. Uh, now I want to check that uh, dw is zero, okay? um, because we want we want w to be a cycle, so we better check that uh, dw is zero. Um, <clears throat> Um, so dw, that's uh, dpv, but that's the same as pdv because uh, p is a, <coughs> is a chain map. Uh, but dv we know is the same as iu, so that's p of i of u. Um, but uh, <coughs> but uh, yeah, we, each row here is a short exact sequence, so uh, p, p composed i is zero, uh, so that's zero. Um, 
Uh, so we're now we're seeing that uh, W is a cycle. Um, and so I can just define W bar to be square bracket W in uh, HN of uh, W. So now this is Uh, so this list is a snake. Um, so yeah, delta of W bar is U bar as required. Okay. <coughs> okay, so for our final lemma, okay, we want to claim, um, show the kernel of this uh, delta here. Uh, we want to prove that that's uh, in the, contained in the image of this p lower star. Okay, we proved the uh, reverse containment uh, a few lemmas ago. Uh, now we're going to prove it this way around. Okay. <coughs> um, uh, so, so for our proof, we're going to suppose that uh, W bar is in the uh, kernel of delta. So that means that there exists a snake which starts with W bar and then has to end with zero. <clears throat> um, so then uh, we need to, uh, <clears throat> uh, so we need to prove that this uh, W bar is in the image of P lower star. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so what does it mean? Um, uh, snake, well, the final snake condition, um, says that uh, uh, this condition five here um, okay so that says that uh, uh, square bracket u is zero uh, <coughs> um, um, that means that there exists some u uh, u prime in um uh, with uh, d of u prime equal to u. Okay. So uh, let's actually mark uh, mark the value of various elements we're talking about here. So yeah, we've got our w here. We know we've got a snake, right? Uh, uh, w is here. Uh, we've got a snake. So we've got this, and then you've got dv here, which is the same as i of u, and your u here. Okay. <clears throat> And now we've said that, yeah, uh, square bracket u is supposed to be zero, so there exists a, uh, a u prime with that uh, which hits, so there's a u prime here. <coughs> okay, so, uh, uh, <coughs> so then uh, we want to understand about the, uh, uh, about the v versus uh, i of u prime. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, um, so yeah, yeah. If we look at this uh, v minus i of u prime, okay. So uh, yeah, you're kind of interested in whether v might be the same as i of u, of u prime. So let's subtract them and see what we get. Um, well, it's not in fact going to be zero in general, but we can look at d of it. Okay, <clears throat> and so this will be dv uh, minus. Then you get uh, di of u prime, but uh, but i is a chain map, so it's the same as i of d of u prime. Uh, <coughs> uh, but uh, dv, uh, so that's, that's dv minus, now du prime was equal to u, as we've got here. Um, but dv and iu are the same, right, because we've got a snake, and one of the snake conditions is condition 4 here, says iu is dv. So, uh, so this is 0. Uh, <coughs> um, so if we look at this v minus i u prime, that's a, that's a cycle, uh, a cycle in degree n in v. Um, and so we've got uh, a well-defined element, square bracket v minus i u prime in hn v. And uh, p lower star of this element, 
So that's PV minus uh, P of I of U prime. And remember, our U, our rows are uh, short exact sequences, so P composed with I is zero. So that's the same thing as PV. Um, but uh, PV by this CO, you know, we, we said this was a snake, so uh, we've got this uh, snake condition here, P of V is W. So that's square bracket W. And then by the uh, this second snake condition here, that's the same as W bar. Okay, so now we're seeing uh, that W bar is in the image of P lower star, which is what we were supposed to prove. Okay, so now if you put the, uh, the last few lemmas together, uh, we've now shown that uh, every step, uh, uh, every, uh, every point in this sequence here is exact. Uh, the image of every map is uh, the same as the kernel of the next one. So we've got a, 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 an exact sequence. Well, we've just shown five terms of it. You can string them all together so you get a kind of infinite, infinitely long exact sequence relating the homology of U, V, and W. And that's, that's our snake level.